Hello, Krillin. So, Goku's not here? He's dead. Oh, that's right. He sacrificed himself to save her. Yeah, except Cell came back stronger than ever. I took care of him, though. Say, didn't Cell say something about blowing away the entire solar system? <laughs> <laughs> ah, why think small? I have enough energy right now to annihilate your entire solar system. Yeah, I remember him saying something like that. Oh, wow, just how powerful is Cell? That's a good question. And let's find out. The universe is bind together by forces. You mean like... Now the force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. No, not those forces. The four fundamental forces of nature. The forces of gravity, the electromagnetic forces, the weak and the strong nuclear forces. So when we say destroying something, we actually mean overcoming the forces which bind whatever that something is. For instance, when I destroyed cell, I actually have to overcome the forces that hold cell's molecules together. So what force do we need to overcome to destroy the solar system? Before we go that far, let us take a look at how we overcome those forces. When things are stable and held together by forces, they have some inert energy called potential energy. Think of it as the energy required to move it. Now, in order to break it apart, we need to add energy to the system, or we say doing some work to the system. When the energy added or the work done is equal to the total potential energy within the system, the system will break apart, which remove it from the influence of the force which give it its potential energy. And the minimum energy required to break system from the force is called binding energy. So that is how we destroy something, Curlin. Huh. If you add enough energy to any object, it will break. That is correct. And the Kamehameha is just one way of adding energy to object to destroy it. The Kamehameha is a powerful key blast where we use our key to create a ball of plasma we then launch at the enemy. Plasma is superheated gas, which is the same thing that makes up the sun. So Kamehameha is just like a small sun, except with much more energy within it. Normally, like the sun, the energy of the Kamehameha is controlled and contained, only released when we command it. But if we let it loose, it will result in a giant explosion, releasing all of its energy to its surroundings, destroying everything in its path, not unlike a supernova. Now, just how much energy is released if we let cells Kamehameha explode? That is what we're going to figure out. Now, do you remember what we said about binding energy and the four fundamental forces? We're now going to take a deeper look at them. For a really small object like the nuclei of an atom, it is held together by the weak and strong nuclear forces. For slightly bigger ones like molecules, it is held together by electromagnetic forces. But for huge objects like planets, stars, and the solar system, it is held together by gravity. So what we're looking at is a total gravitational binding energy of the solar system. Remember, Gravitational binding energy is the minimum energy that must be added to a system for the system to be no longer bound by gravity. Now, in order to calculate the gravitational binding energy, that is actually pretty difficult. Thankfully, for a spherical mass of uniform density, we already know the formula. The total binding energy is equal to 3gm squared over 5r. Here. Spherical mass of uniform density just means our system 
must be shaped like a ball and the stuff in it is really well spread out. In our formula, G is Newton's gravitational constant, M is the total mass of the system, where R is the radius of our ball. So, let us calculate something similar that is ball shaped. Didn't Master Roshi once destroy the moon? Alright, let us take a look at the moon then. The mass of the moon is about 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. The radius is 1,737 kilometers, or for our purpose, it's 1,737,000 meters. Plugging those numbers into our formula, we'll get that the gravitational binding energy of the moon is 1.24 times 10 to the 29 joules. That amount of energy is easy to pull off as science, but even the sun only outputs 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules every second. So there is a total of 5 minutes worth of solar energy within Master Roshi's Kamehameha. Not to mention that is 10,000 trillion centuries worth of energy output by an average human being, which is about 150 joules per second. Master Roshi is indeed the strongest human being on Earth. Can we try it on a solar system now? We can apply the same formula to the solar system. The mass of the sun consists of 99% of the mass of the solar system. As for the radius, the most distant object discovered in the solar system is a dwarf planet called Setna, which is on average 13 billion kilometers away. So that will be our radius. If we plug in those numbers, we will get that the energy required to destroy the solar system is 1.219 times 10 to the 37 joules. Oh, me. except we run into a little problem. Make that two problems. Our solar system is not ball shaped, for all we know. And its matter is definitely well spread out. In fact, most of it is in the center, in the sun. So we have to do a better approximation. Now help me out, Curlin. Oh, so many numbers. Okay, okay. Using data, the radius and the mass of the sun, the eight major planets, the major moons of those planets, as well as Pluto, we were able to calculate the gravitational binding energy for all those objects. Then we added them up to give us an approximation of the total energy needed to destroy the solar system. The number we got is 2.275 times 10 to the 41 joules. That is the energy that will be released by cells Kamehameha. Now, if we're comparing that to Master Roshi's Kamehameha, which destroyed the moon, it's about 1.83 times 10 to the 12 times energy required to destroy the moon. Which means, cell is about 2 trillion times Master Roshi. This does not take account into the fact that the explosion will be centered at Earth and energy will be lost during transition, as well as most of the explosion will miss the planets. So, in actuality, the energy could go higher. Do think you're actually stronger than Cell? You guys are all monsters. <laughs>so that is how powerful Cell is. Wait Gohan, isn't your Kamehameha stronger? Why didn't your Kamehameha destroy the solar that system? That is pretty easy, I just need to let the energy dissipate very slowly. Let me show you. Wait, it's okay, I don't need to demonstrate. Wait, hold on, right here? No, hold on Gohan, no, no, wait, I'm right here, no, stop, no, Gohan, stop! What's that for, Mr. Piccolo? Nerd. Wait, what?
you. I'm glad that's over. Isn't Master Roche's power level 139 or something? Now I guess we can calculate the power level of Cell, right? Shut up, Colin. I'm just asking. It's actually not that hard. If we multiply 200 trillion to Master Roche's power level, we'll get just a bit under 300 trillion. Three? 300 trillion? Don't you think that's a little bit too high? Yeah, I guess so. That is more than 2 million times Frieza's power level. I guess we'll never know. Yeah, I guess we'll never know. All the scars. Hello Dragon Ball Planet and Math Lovers, were you satisfied with the answer of Cell's power level being just under 300 trillion? Me neither, so I took a look at the power levels of various characters and tried to figure out why. It turns out power level is completely messed up. If you plot the power level of Vegeta, Master Roshi, and the average human, which is 18,139 and 5, as well as their energy output of 4.48 times 10 to 32 to destroy the Earth, 1.24 times 10 to 29 to destroy the moon, and 150 joules. We see a plot that doesn't make any sense. So I tried a few more models. I first tried the linear log model, which doesn't give me any result either. And then I tried the log log model, which takes the log of the energy versus the log of the power level. We then get some interesting results. Looks like they follow some nice patterns here. Except Vegeta is off the chart, and Master Roshi is off the chart. Vegeta could be bluffing, or Master Roshi is holding back. Which one is it? It seems when you take a log log graph to see some patterns. That means the power level is not linearly proportional to the energy output. Or maybe it is linear, except Vegeta is bluffing. I think Cell is bluffing too. Or his power level is really a few hundred trillion. Who knows? Regardless, in all three models, Frieza, in his first form of a power level of 530,000, can easily destroy Earth. Check yourself. So, is there something to power level after all? That there is some kind of formula that exchanges power level to energy output, or is power level bullshit? What do you think, Dragon Ball fans and math lovers? Can you come up with your own model? The data are all here. Comment on your own models or your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Please rate this video and check out some of my other content. We'll take a look at some other ideas and models next video. See ya!